Hi guys, Tobin McGrath here. Paul Rubio from Aperture Fight 4 may ask a question about uh, instructors doing demos and have a, a student attack with one slow attack. Uh, for instance, if Dan does a one and then, you know, come and block the one and then two, three, four, you know, multiple of hits. Uh, and myself and a lot of other instructors replied, you know, guys will do this to look cool on a demo. But it can serve a purpose if you structure the training correctly. And uh, we do that in the five attack subsystem of Peter Tertia, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, the way to make this uh, drill practical is to work on the multiple beats or multiple timing beats. Uh, and we start off with the basic uh, single beat. Uh, we are matching uh, the number per number. So if Dan comes up with one, two, three, four, I match it with one, two, three, four. And this is the, the basic way everyone starts pretty much, just mirroring what the opponent does as a way to recognize what he's doing, you know, for the uh, new student. Then you want to go and what we do, at least in the five attack subsystem, is come behind that number. So basically you want to get in the idea of any number can fight any other number. So if he comes in with a one, I count it with the two. He comes in with a two, I count it with a one. He comes in with a three, I counter that with a four. He comes with a four, I counter that with a three. And essentially it's using different footwork. All right, a uh, more advanced drill on distancing uh, and timing would be, um, let's say a basic one, two, three, four pattern. And I'm using ranging footwork to decide which footwork I will use against each strike. So one uh, premise in the tertia is you should be able to use any strike to counter any of his strikes. So if he's coming in with a one, under theory of ranging footwork, I can come in a reverse triangle here and block his one with a one going to his hand, right? We'll go to the stick to make it easier on him. Uh, if he comes in on a one and I need to deliver two, which is more, uh, let's say he's not practiced for that, usually do a different number. So I come in with a two on the wrist, if I have a sword on the shoulder or the head, if I have a stick, and at the very least, it gets me center line for a thrust, right? So the way I do that is I can't simply do reverse triangle on the other side, because obviously I get hit with that, right? So what I do instead is side step, wide side step, and there's my backhand to shoulder or head, right? And it also gives me access to the center line. If my best cut against him would be a three cut, especially as a taller opponent, you have swords, then I come in reverse triangle that way, but I duck under and I get in early in the timing. So I catch his uh, forearm while it's still um, coming down before it gets to full power. However, if my best cut is a four cut against him, I'll come in, I'll retreat on forward triangle technically back that way. And I'll uppercut his hand as it goes by and I'm outside his range. So a lot of what you're doing here is deciding what footwork do I need to plug in a one versus one, a two versus one, a three versus one, and a four versus one. I'm gonna do that against a one, a two, three, and four with all four of your strikes. All right, you can use that same theory uh, with boxing strikes or any really striking pattern or striking uh, weapons. So if he throws a jab at me, that will call that a one, I can block a one with a one. If he throws a cross at me, I can block a cross with a cross or two with a two. He throws a hook at me, I can block a hook with a hook, either direction. He comes to an uppercut, I can block an uppercut with a, or counter an uppercut with an uppercut or a four with a four. So let's say my game plan is, if he throws a jab, is to counter with a one. If I get contact that or timing, I throw over the top with a two, I hook him with three, and instead of an uppercut and that kidney, maybe I'll throw a body shot. So my plan, game plan is one, two, three, four, right? I throw the, he throws a jab, I throw my one, but as I'm throwing, intending to throw the cross, he throws his cross, I might have to change my block and still get a cross in there. Do you see the idea? Uh, or let's say he does a one, I throw the one, I go to th hit the cross, but he waves out, and now his punch is coming. Oh, now I gotta go and change into a hook to the body by ducking, or I can throw a hook by, by hook. I can throw the hook by blocking on this side of the body. Um, 
But the idea is how to work your counters into your game plan. So if my game plan is, is one, two, three, four, how do I work that in? One, two, three, four, if he counters me at any point. Um, so again, if he comes with a jab, we already have countering a one with a one by a simple parry, right? I can counter a one with a two by a slip. I can counter a one with a hook by slipping out this way, and there's my hook over the top that side. I can counter one with an uppercut with a four by slipping on the inside. So as long as you have that process of being able to counter any number with any other number, then your game plan may be throw a combination, a four count combination, and then any place he comes with a counter of any other number, you're able to counter it. And that's how you're able to do these multiple shots uh, as a practical drill. Okay, thanks guys. Train hard, but train smart.